Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jetty Jet, and today we're going to be going over some of my quick tips on how to get started on Clip Studio Paint. We're going to go over how to set up your canvas, how to set your hotkeys, and also how to save files. I just want to make a note. Again, this is how I set up things. It's not the rule. Uh, there's really no right or wrong way of setting things up. This is just a starter's guide for those who are having trouble getting started. Okay, so what you guys see here is a blank canvas and um, the initial settings of Clip Studio Paint. Yours might look different depending on which version you have. I know every time I reinstall Clip Studio, it changes a little bit. Um, I just basically reset to default. This is the workspace settings. And I have several different versions and configurations of the desktop or the settings of my workspace. Um, but I'm just going to go over it and show you guys what things are and show you how to configure things and personalize it so that it works best for you. First thing we need to do is open up a new canvas or a new project. So go to file new and you'll see this window pop up for the option to change what type of project you're going to be working on. For me, I'm going to be primarily working on illustrations, but you have the option to work with comics and animation as well. What we are mainly worried about is the canvas size and also the background color. Uh, the color setting just allows you to use color. I've never touched any of these other two options, so color works fine. And the background is the color that we're going to be painting on. It's going to be a layer underneath all of our other layers, and that just serves as a base color. And you can edit that here, or you can just double click it from this layer, and you can also edit that later. But I like this slight creamy color to work on. And I like to work on a 13 inch by 19 inch canvas. And I've already got a preset for that, so I call it the art print. And to save your preset, once you have a setting that you like using often, you can click this little disc icon here, and that's going to save the preset. You can call it whatever you want, and it'll be listed under this drop down right here. Um, they have some default sizes here B4, 8x11 to A4 is kind of the typical drawing uh, printer paper type of size. Um, but I just like a lot of room for drawing and it also can be reversed. It can be 19 by 13. I mean, feel free to change it up however you want. It can be 10 by 10, 11 by 11, 20 by 20. Um, just my sweet spot is 13 by 19 because I, I like to take it to the shop and get it printed afterwards. So that's a size that I like to work at. Um, and I set my resolution to 300. That just means I have a lot of pixels and it's at a high resolution to draw with. So that if I'm drawing, you're not going to see any pixels until you like get really up close to it. So anytime you create a new project, you're going to see these tabs, these new tabs. So each project is going to be in these tabs and you can close them out. But anytime you see the little asterisk right here, a little dot, that means there has been changes to your program or your project. So once you save, that'll go away. So let's save this for the first time. I'm going to save this project, save as. I'm going to call it setup, setup and hit save and now there isn't an asterisk there so if I start to draw again that's kind of a reminder you'll see it there and also right here and every time I hit save so command or command s for Mac users anytime I say command it's gonna be control for PC so control s and it'll go away make a change and there it goes again save so that's saving your project so let's talk about configuring your workspace so that it feels comfortable and works best for you because depending on your tablet size, you might want more room and declutter a lot of the panels that you won't be using to get the most out of your workspace. And this is going to change over time. The more you use it, the more you feel like you need certain tools in a certain way. I have a bunch of these workspaces here and I've just made one that's default so that we can go over this. So quickly, let's go over some of these panels. So this is the sub tool panel and that's going to show you the preview of each tool that you're using. So when you're switching out these tools, you'll see these different previews. And then you'll have the settings for those tools. And this is for the brush sizes, the brush points, your color windows right here. So this is a pretty comfortable setting already. It has everything that you need. But you'll notice there's a ton of little tabs within the window. And some of them might be a little more important than the others. So you want them to be visible. So I would click out one of these tabs and you can just stack it like this. But then it starts to get really crowded. So then you can move them, move them over on this side if you wanted. Um, and then you can look at all these little ones here and you can close them out. Uh, when you're starting off, we wouldn't worry too much about what these are. You'll just figure out what they are as you go. So this is how you would modify your workspace. Um, right off the bat, you can see that this is the layer property. 
um, information over here. I don't really use any of these, so this whole space here can be used better. And I'm right-handed, so I know that I need these colors a lot more often. So I'm gonna use this one. This is actually my favorite color tool. I'm gonna stack it over here. To get rid of the tabs, you would pull it out and you can X out this way. And if you wanted to just save it for later, you can move that tab down over here. In case you wanna find out what it is later, you can just move it down, put it in there like this. But something like the animation cell, I know that I'm not gonna be animating, so I can just take that out and declutter. Layers is something that I generally want to be really large. I wanna have full view of all of my layers because sometimes layers can span in the hundreds and the more space, the better. And then I would choose the hue saturation slider. This is the type of color palette that I like to use mostly. You can stack them over each other like this, or you can just make it the main tab like this. So as you can see, you can modify it to however you feel works best for you. My favorite color selector is this hue saturation value slider because I can just slide left and right for my hues to make it more saturated, left and right. It's just a lot easier, I feel. This is more traditional, the color wheel and then the square. If you understand a little bit of color theory, the wheel might work for you, but this wheel is not really a true uh, color wheel that shows like complementary colors because normally complementary colors would be directly across from each other. These are more like the split complementary colors, which are colors that look really nice together. So yellow and blue are nice. These reds and blues are nice. These greens and purples are nice. Um, complementary colors would be purple and yellow. Red would be green. It's a lot more visual and it looks a lot more fun. There's also a triangle version just by clicking this icon here. A uh, really classical way of accessing your colors by clicking one of these square icons here, these color palettes, adjusting it this way. You see a little preview on this right side here. And if you wanted to choose a color that's already on the canvas, you can click this little eyedropper tool and pick it up from this way. So the canvas is that color. And you would slide up your hues going up and down this way. And you can also adjust the way the way the colors are laid out. This is, I'm guessing, hue, lightness, saturation. This is the hue saturation value. It gives you really specific coordinations for the colors, which I don't really ever use. Again, you can choose the way it's laid out. So there's just a lot of different options. Another thing that's really important to me is the color history. Because a lot of times I'll pick a color and then need that color again. So that's this one right here. So I would pull that out and put that right next to this right here. And I would collapse the color wheel. What I used to use a lot, I don't use so much anymore, is the a color palette. Let's put this right here. So this would make it a lot easier to go back to a color, to a precise color that you use. So for example, if I were to use this color, go to my ink brush, you can always come back to it. So this is great for something that if you're using more graphic art or animation and you need that precise color again and again, or if it's just starting off and you want to keep things simple, you would use this. So let's say if you were working on a character and you need some skin tones and you had specific skin tones that you're using like this and you wanted to have them right next to each other, you would basically be selecting the color using the option or the eyedropper tool and that color will be selected. Notice how the colors shift every time. I'm on the eyedropper tool and that's using option. I'll click this color, then I can add the color by clicking this button here. So that color is now over here. So to move it and arrange it, you would click it and hold command or control and place it over here. Let's do the other two. So selecting this color, click this button here, and then this color. So now they're right next to each other and easy for you, for you to pick. So after a while, you might have a color palette that you always go to, same colors for shadows, same colors for skin. Maybe you can customize it that way. And then there's a whole bunch of other color sets to choose from with the top window here. And this is just a default color set, which works great when starting off. So I'll save this window and put this back here. I no longer use this as much because I don't really do graphic art as much. When you're using like flat colors that you need to pull over and over again, this is a great color palette to use. But generally I use this hue saturation value slider. And if you're trying to get to this and you first see this, this is this is the first thing that might pop up in the order that it shows up. Just gotta click on these little tabs here and I just have it set like that. So to make more space, I wanna try to get rid of this because intermediate colors, I don't really use this. It's this very subtle sh shifts in hues. Uh, for me, I don't really use use this as much. Approximate color, that's a similar thing as well. So those two, I don't, I don't generally use. So pulling that out, I will have much more space to work with. So if you wanted to have more of your brushes visible, you can just by dragging the windows up like this. 
Another window that I always move out of the way when setting up my workspace is this window here. To expand and see what's inside it, you can click this little arrow here. So you can see that this is your materials window. So if you're working on manga, you have all these different stock effects and images to pull from. Um, so depending on the project, you might want this here, but since it's, I don't really use it very often, I just move this to the right here like this. You can try to get rid of this all together as well. Pull them out one at a time like this, just one at a time and collapse them all out like this. Um, but some, some of these are pretty cool, especially if you're using like, if you're working with comics or if you need some reference, they have 3D models that you can pull out so you can play with that and see what you need. Uh, for the most part, I don't really use this at all. So I could just pull out all of these and that'll just really maximize the amount of space. And I have this extra space right here to, to paint with. And then to get anything back, you can go to the window. And if you wanted that color wheel to come back, you just click this area here and there's a the color wheel. If you want the materials to come back, you'll have to make them come back one at a time like this and place it back in and rearrange it however you like. So after you've created your workspace, you can save it out and have a preset just by going to workspace and selecting register workspace. And this window will pop up and you can save it. We'll just call it CSP example. Hit OK. And there it is, your CSP example. So if I go back to the default, it'll just be set like this. Okay, let's look at one of my examples of workspaces. One of my favorites, the one that I'm currently using is the iMac June 2020. An easy way to label your workspaces is just with dates, because over time you're just gonna have trouble figuring out these names. So switching over to it already, you can see that I have these two little notches over here on the sides and just clicking on this window to expand it will fill in that space. Just so this is generally how I like it. If you want to copy it, you can just by just by looking. Another thing that's really important for me is a uh, color history because I'm using all of these different hues and colors that are mixing and blending with each other. More of a painterly style. It can be kind of hard to figure out which color I was using last. So having a color history tab right next to this colors is most convenient. I can put it over here so that it's a lot easier to pull from. But again, I don't really like to have two locations for my colors, but that just depends on how you prefer to work. I like to keep my brush set open like this. This way I can easily select the brush sizes. So I lay out everything based off of priority and importance and how frequently I use it. So this is how I generally have my workspace and just look at how it's set up and you can copy it from here, but definitely feel free to experiment and play with it and figure out what works best for you because everybody's different and it depends on what you're working on. But that's it for this video. We're gonna have to pick back up on saving files in another video because it took a little bit longer than I hoped. Until then, you guys can follow me on all my socials at The Jetty Jet Show. Thanks for watching, good luck, and keep drawing you guys. Peace.